Hello everyone, this is Wrath, and today we are going through Act 5, Chapter 2, Map 6, Abrogation. This is where you're going to have to fight through the Collector, which will also get you uncollected. So the global node for this one is going to be Bane, and Bane here is going to cause a curse to be put on your opponent when you hit them, and that curse will transfer to you after the end of 10 seconds or when you get hit. So definitely do not get hit, that's going to be the main strategy here. And additionally, you're going to want to time your attacks to hit them right at the end of that timer so you can get it over to them. We're going to be taking the Chaos Pathway where basically opponents will gain power, so having power controllers will be very useful here. And additionally, they're going to have random effects generated when you use supers. Okay, so we're using a team of four stars here just to show that it is definitely possible to get uncollected when you just have a team of max out four stars. Um, you definitely should have a few uh, full team revives and gets the collector because he is very difficult. Sometimes you just get crushed when you start the fight against him. So having a team revive is very, very important there. I would recommend team revives and not health potions. So the first one you fight is Spider-Man. Just remember again, you want to time your attack so you get in right when that Bane transfers. So you just saw there with that Spider-Man, I basically waited till that timer ticked over and then hit him. When you're fighting Spider-Man, having someone that's an evasion resistance is very, very good. So for instance, Iceman with Cold Snap. If you're using Iceman, if he is duped, then you basically start with a Cold Snap, which will stop him from evading. And then you continuously use your first super to basically get him to stay um, resistant to evasion. So basically Spider-Man won't evade. You can also use other champions that have true strikes, such as Killmonger, to get this done as well. You'll notice that Bane in the upper right is that cross, like basically the skull with the red tick down timer. Once it gets all the way to the end on your opponent, it will transfer to you and cause you to start degenerating. So make sure that when you have that switch over to you, you have stunned them to hit them, or you are in the middle of one of your combos. Use your super to make that longer as well. We'll see it in the future as well. Also for Spider-Man, you can dodge the first super after those two web blasts. Just make sure you dodge right at the end. And then additionally, you want to push him to his second super if you can, because that is completely dodgeable. All right, so now we're moving on to Angela. Angela doesn't have any particularly difficult uh, abilities. So the big thing here is just you want to make sure you're baiting the first super, because that way it's completely dodgeable. The second one, you can dodge the range attack, but the first one's much easier. I'm using X-23 here just to get more damage in with the bleeds. Again, the big thing is you're gonna to want to bait out a first super earlier in the timer if you can, so that way you can have time for the curse to transfer. Um, but it doesn't really make a big impact. If you do have the curse transfer to you, don't worry too much. You will be able to get back in, so don't panic and get hit. You're better off taking some of the degeneration damage and then just getting in when you need to, rather than trying to really push that timer over to them and taking zero degeneration damage. If you can though, like right there, we baited that uh, that super out early enough so that way by the end of their super, we're able to get in and hit. So with Angela, again, her first super is completely dodgeable. It's very easy. Just make sure you dash backwards until she does the sword swing down after her jump, and then you're golden. All right, so now we're gonna be moving forward. So here we're gonna be fighting Falcon. So Falcon, again, his first super is more difficult to dodge, so you actually want to push him to his second one. His second one is basically this big dash, like kind of flying in at you. You just dash backward on it. The first one is a bunch of uh, gun attacks, so I would recommend if you if you do get the first super activated, just take on your shield. I wouldn't recommend not trying to dodge this. So again, with that bane on, you do not want to dodge anything that could potentially hit you if you're not good at dexterity. What you just saw there again is that Bane counter came down when I was in a combo. So one thing you can do here against this Bane is you can stun them and then let them just sit there until you think you're in the right timing for your combo and then attack them afterwards. Additionally, if you're starting to get them towards a third super, you can just stun them and not attack them, waiting for them to get that timer to go down so that way you can hit them at the very, very end when you get the curse and you just attack them one time. So overall, Falcon's not particularly difficult. Just remember again, Getting even a little bit of damage from a super is extremely uh, difficult for this one because if you get any damage from a super that you didn't dodge correctly, then you will get Bane transferred to you. So not only did you get hit by the super, additionally now you are starting to degenerate, which means you're going to rush in, try to get the transfer back to them, and mostly die. So again, if you are not comfortable with dodging a super on this route, I would not do it. I would just take on the shield and just 
take the chip damage because getting the damage from a, even a little bit of the super, maybe you dodge 90% of it, but then you get the degeneration, which is 2.5% of their health. So that's gonna be a massive amount of damage. So just be very, very careful with this. So again, perfect scenario is you can transfer it right back. Um, if you have to take a little bit of degeneration, that's fine. But just like we saw right there, bait the super out earlier, so that way by the end of it, you can get in and hit them when it's transferred over. So against Civil Warrior, it's not particularly difficult. His first super, he basically just does a attack downwards and then basically shield himself up. Second super, he's going to do this kind of combo where he ends with a kick. You can dexterity both of them, um, so it's not particularly difficult. You'll saw there that he got um, power locked. So because we're on the, the chaos pathway, you are going to get random effects whenever they activate a super. So what I would recommend here is saving your own supers so that way you can utilize them if you get a very, very bad debuff on you because of the randomness. So you have to be careful here because you could get degeneration, you could get bleed, you could get poison, you could get power lock. So there's a lot of options for that, so just be very careful. One of the most difficult ones for them to get is if they get unstoppable, your best strategy is if you have a super to stun them with a parry and then activate that super which will remove the unstoppable if you don't have that then what you're going to want to do is just basically continuously stun them and then while they're stunned they're not going to be attacking you with unstoppable and you'll set the dodge backwards and wait for it to go away because it has a timer on it and we'll see that eventually here so with loki you can dodge a second super very easily um, he's basically just this big swipe up with the ice and you're waiting for the end of this uh, the scepter attack is right there and you dash back in so i would recommend baiting his second super loki's thing is when he's duped he's going to generate um, energy to the first super so the first super is going to constantly be there basically you can dodge the first super it basically has a melee attack at the beginning and then a magic blast um, the magic blast though timing will be different depending on where you are away from it so again if you are not comfortable with this just take the second attack, the magic blast on your shield, because if you get hit, you're gonna suffer the de degeneration plus the hit from Loki. Additionally, I would not recommend dashing in after his first super because his first super timing to get in is very difficult. And if he happens to catch you on your dash in, again, it's very, very high punish on this. So the big thing here is take the chip damage, if you don't get the parry, just hold and wait for a heavy attack um, because you do not want to get hit on this one. So again, there, we basically baited his first super and then you just dash back in afterwards to retransfer the curse. I would recommend someone that does um, damage over time or increases their own. So this could be X-23, this could be Black Panther, this could be Star-Lord, this could be Killmonger. I mean, this could be anyone that basically causes damage over time, debuff. Um, or increases their own attack damage over time. It just makes the fights a little bit easier. But honestly, the nice thing about this path here is that it is completely not dependent upon who you're, gonna, who you're gonna have. So you don't really need any specific counters. The one that I would recommend is there is a Groot on this pathway. So if you have someone that can handle buffs, so like Magic or Dr. Voodoo, that's extremely useful, makes the fight a lot shorter. And additionally, there is a Venom on this path, and I, I find him very difficult in terms of his uh, second super. So what I recommend is having someone to power control him as well, but again, it's not necessary. This pathway can be completely done with any champion that you have, so just pick your um, best five stars and then just bring them, or best four stars and just bring them in, because um, you really don't need any specific counters for this path, which is the nice part. All right, so for Guillotine, you saw here, so she is unstoppable, and I have no power, so I can't use it. So what I do is just stun, get one hit in, back up. Stun, get one hit in, back up. This is probably the most unfortunate starting to have but it's okay again i'm starting to generate but i'm not worried because i'll be able to get in there so you just saw i degenerated 50 percent but if i had tried to get in there earlier or attack against that unstoppable i would have taken a lot more damage than 50 percent that's why champions like x23 are better um because you can regenerate over time so you can kind of get the health back but in general it's not a big deal you're going to take some damage for sure while you're trying to stabilize your combos but it, it doesn't really matter overall because you'll get through it. You might have to heal a little bit more at the collector, but overall I would make this a slow drawn out fight rather than a very, very fast one. So again, if you don't get that Bane transferred back to them, it's okay. Just make sure that you're slowed down, try to parry them, try to get in after a super and just be very consistent because taking the damage is gonna be much, much more severe if you get hit. 
All right, so so far, no one's been specifically difficult. You're moving on to Dr. Voodoo. He does regenerate at the beginning, so if you have someone that could heal block, that's a great. Or you could use Despair with um, X-23 or Black Panther. Just as a note, my mastery is here. I do have Mystic Dispersion. I do have Assassination. I do have Despair, and I do have Deep Wounds. So that makes my um, Mystics very, very good in terms of magic, but it also makes my leaders very, very good in terms of X-23 and Black Panther. Um, that makes me get through these fights a little bit faster. But the nice thing here is any of the strategies that you're seeing on this uh, run walkthrough are completely usable by any other champion. Like, I'm not using any specific counters currently against these champions, other than, I said already, Groot and Venom. I just find them very, very obnoxious, and so that's why I like to use um, a power controller and someone to get rid of their buffs. But again, you do not have to have them. So far, nothing has been specific to a particular champion. Other than, I guess, at the beginning, um, we did have that Spider-Man. So the Spider-Man, I would recommend someone like Iceman or True Striker. You don't have to do it. So really briefly, for Iceman, um, if you, sorry, if you don't have Iceman, with Spider-Man, just make sure that you ha just stun them and then attack them afterwards. Stun and attack, stun and attack. Don't try to get too greedy with his evasion because he might evade and then destroy you. With Dr. Voodoo that you saw there, just remember his first super is basically that magic attack up that portal attack you can completely dodge that second one he does throw that magic blast at you so you make sure you dodge backwards and then shield against that um magic blast or dodge backwards again and try to dodge it but again if you don't have that timing down i'll just take on the shield the chip damage isn't that severe i recommend baiting his first super though all right so here's venom again i don't particularly like trying to deal with venom so that's why i use a power controller but obviously i just got power locked um, big thing for Venom is his first super is much easier to dodge. He basically just dodges straight backwards because he does those web blasts or web attacks. Basically, he does like a web whip and then you're just going to dash in right afterwards. His second super is this big, long combo that rushes towards you. So it can be very hard to dodge. And additionally, if you dodge off the beginning of that second super, he will hit you basically because he'll go fast enough to catch you. So it's very difficult to do. So if he does have his second super and you're baiting it, just take on the shield. That's my recommendation. Again, if you are doing something where the timer for Bane is almost there, but not quite, stun them. Wait a few seconds because your parry has some time on it in terms of the stun, then start your combo. And then if you need a little bit more time, you can activate a super to get it in. You also can lengthen the time in between your attacks a little bit and still maintain that combo. So here again, as soon as you get Bane, just stun them, push them forward. If you have a power controller like Vision, um, in case anyone's not familiar with him, his second super is the one that's going to drain their entire power bar, whereas the first super basically drains a single power bar. If he's a uh, dupe, this is Vision, Age of Ultron, then you're going to get that power back, or at least a portion of it, which really helps you power control them and lock them down. So, for the most part, if you have a power controller against Vision, not a big deal. His first super is very dodgeable, and you're keeping him from his second super. His second super is the one that's really problematic. And additionally, if you're not power controlling him having to bait, he really kind of comes after you very, very fast. So he catches a lot of people when they're trying to dash back and bait. So that's why having power control against him is, is very, very useful. All right, so now we're fighting Old Man Logan. Old Man Logan, for the most part, has nothing particularly difficult to, to him. He's basically just X-23 or Wolverine. Um, more Wolverine. So his first and second super are very, very dodgeable. I wouldn't be worried about them at all. First super is basically just that forward swipe of the claws. Um, you just can get in right afterwards. Um, when you're we're baiting, same strategies again. You're just going to dash backwards, and then they dash forwards, and then, then you dash backwards to get them to activate their super. Um, you also will activate it sometimes after you attack them one time on the shield. So just make sure that you're baiting them early. So right there you saw that I was starting to bait as soon as the, uh, the Bane countdown timer was on him. So that way by the time that he activated his super, I was able to then transfer the Bane counter. If you try to bait too late, the worst thing that can happen to you is that you will then be degenerating while they're in their super animation, which basically means you take a bunch of damage and are not able to get that attack in. And you saw there, I did get hit off of his heavy attack. So remember that um, Old Man Logan's heavy attack is a longer heavy attack. It has multiple combos in it. So do be careful for that. And you saw that as soon as I got hit, I started to degenerate a fair amount. But again, do not panic because if you try to panic and get in there, what will normally happen is you attack the shield and you have to wait for a parry. So what you're better off doing is just sitting and degenerating, waiting for them to dash into you, then you parry them, then you transfer. Even though it seems like it's the worst strategy because you're sitting there degenerating, 
Sitting there and degenerating, but then stunning them earlier and getting the attack in will transfer that Bane much faster and will also make it that you don't actually get any um, damage from being counterattacked. So basically, even if you get degeneration, don't really switch up your, your strategy at all. For Yondu, you don't need a bleed immune person, but a bleed, bleed immune person will be very, very helpful. How you're going to deal with him is you're going to bait the first super that you just saw there. Has basically the um, arrow comes in once, then he punches, and the arrow comes in a second time. You dash in after that second one. It's very easy to dodge. You just go in right afterwards. And you saw there, I baited it early enough so that when I came back in, the Bane just retransferred. And although Bane here is problematic, it's also nice because it does cause a damage over time debuff on your opponent. And so it's pretty decent overall. And so you just saw here that he got unstoppable again. Um, you could use your super, but I wanted to keep my ice armor, so I basically just continued to parry him. Again, Unstoppable is very annoying because also you have that timer for Bane, but overall I would not be too worried about it. You'll, you'll get through it by basically just stunning them, and if your Bane countdown timer does go down while they're unstoppable, you can still just get a single hit in when you um, parry them, and that will transfer it back even though they're unstoppable. Just make sure you don't try to hit them more than once, otherwise it's going to be problematic. He also has one of those uh, heavy attacks where he does a punch and then the arrow attack, so make sure that you're not dashing it too early. Overall, Yandu's not particularly difficult. The problem here is that if you do not have a bleed in you person, when you block him, you can become bled. And so that is a problematic in terms of damage over time. So I would recommend against Yandu having a bleed immune person, but if you don't, that's fine. Just bait the first super. That's gonna be your best bet. Basically, you're gonna try to keep giving him his um, first super every combo because of the increased power gain, and then you're gonna bait out that first super. All right, so now we're moving on to Groot. So Groot has a mechanic where he basically gains a ton of buffs. Those buffs are very problematic in terms of his damage output and his um, resistances. So I'd recommend someone that can basically use them against him. So Magic, if you use her third super, you're gonna be able to basically remove them all and cause a massive amount of damage. Um, if you have Dr. Voodoo, you can transfer them into poison counters. If you have Loki, you can steal them, which is also a great way to do it because you get the increased uh, precision, increased cruelty. But again, if you have Mystic Dispersion also with a Mystic Champion, then whenever his buffs expire, which either through your third super or just naturally expiring, you're going to gain your power back, which is very, very good. So you just saw there, I used the third super with, with the magic to get rid of all of his buffs to deal massive damage, and then on top of that, I almost got my third super back. Um, for Groot, I would recommend not baiting his second super. His second super is his like unblockable stomp, then he regenerates. So I bait his first one where he basically does a melee attack right there and then basically these vines. You dash in right after the vines. So just dash away as far away as you want and then dash in after he ends his attack. Um, his heavy attack is basically that punch which is completely dodgeable as well. And then what you're waiting for if you're using the strategy is you're waiting for him to activate his buffs. So right now he's going to get a ton of buffs. And so then I'm just going to basically use my third super and it's going to do a massive amount of damage because there's damage per buff removed. So you'll see here he goes from 27% to zero. So you don't need this. You can definitely just kind of power through this, especially if someone like Star-Lord or anyone that does basically higher damage output over time. Um, you're basically just going to bait the first super over and over again and then try to not give him his second super. So for all, you can still do Groot with anyone. It's not particularly difficult, um, but it is much more easy if you have uh, like magic or Dr. Voodoo. All right, so now we're doing um, Spider-Gwen. Spider-Gwen's thing is if she uses her first super, then she becomes uh, able to evade. So you want to try to make her not use her first super, so you can just attack her and try to get her to her second super, and that's basically just like a um, big kick downwards. So it's a little bit easier to try to bait the second one. So again, same exact strategy. You're gonna parry, you're gonna attack, you're gonna try to time your combo so that we transfer Bane backwards, uh, back to her. Again, it's not particularly difficult. Just make sure that you don't get um, flustered when you have that Bane on you. And you just saw there the second super, it's basically just this kick downwards. So against Spider-Gwen or any of these champions, if you want to try to get it to a second super, use your own super to push them towards it if you can. That's kind of more of a high order uh, technique. And so you just saw there, she never was able to evade because she never used her first super. So just use that to your advantage. So overall, not too difficult. So now we're gonna go fight the Collector, which is the boss of Act 5, Chapter 2, Map 6, which gets you uncollected if you beat him. 
I had to use two team revives here to get through this with this team of four stars. So it's definitely possible to beat him. Just remember that you are going to have to revive. I would recommend not really healing because you're not going to survive long enough in general anyways. And I would also recommend using team revives unless you have a particular champion that you're fighting much, much better with. Because you're going to have five attempts per. So the big thing here is he has tenacity. So if you do stun him, he can drop that stun very easily. So you have to kind of delay yourself a little bit and then get in there right after to make sure that he actually is stunned. His first super is very difficult to dodge, which I just tried to do there. So make sure that when you are getting hit by his first super, um, just take it on the shield at the beginning. Otherwise you will die trying dexterity, unless you're very good, in which case just go for it. So let's take a look at his abilities here. He can regenerate basically whenever he loses 20% of his max health. Additionally, as he loses health, he gets more relics, so below 85%, he can only take 3% of max damage per hit. Below 70, he gets increased damage. Below 55, he becomes unblockable in terms of special attacks. Below 40, he's stun immune, bleed immune, poison immune. Below 25%, he becomes unstoppable periodically. And then below 10%, he can basically astro overload to regenerate. Now, the interesting thing here is that you'll see in this fight is that when he drops below 40%, he's supposed to be stun immune, bleed immune, and poison immune, and power lock immune. But what you'll see is that after you initiate a fight below that amount of health, you can still bleed him and you can still stun him. So I'm not exactly sure what's happening there. It might be a little bit of a, a odd mechanic, or maybe I'm not fully understanding it, so just keep that in mind. All right, and so I'm using magic here. So one of the great strategies against the collector is using someone that can power lock him, especially early when he's not resistant to power lock. What you're gonna do with magic is basically try to get to your second super by taking the first super on your shield when you need to bait him, and then you're just gonna basically power lock him against the wall. When you do that, you basically are just going to hit him immediately afterwards. It's great if you have limbo, so that way you can get your health backwards. And you're basically just gonna attack him over and over again, using your second super to basically power lock him and stop him from killing you with a super. Um, make sure that you do dodge those heavy attacks at the end of the combos. You just basically dash backwards, dash in. Um, do t keep track of that counter for Bane. But in general, you'll probably get killed fairly quickly. Do a chip damage against a four star. Um, that's fine. The other way you can do it is vision. I didn't do a great job here, but the, you can do the same thing, which is push him against the wall and then basically use your first and second super to basically power lock him down. Um, he doesn't actually power lock, but you're basically going to be power burning him and keeping him below a super bar. So that way you can continuously damage him. Um, for the collector, again, I'm not using a particularly great champion other than Magic and Vision for keeping him down in terms of power. But other great champions are because his attacks are ranged when you use his first and second super, using anyone that can basically evade projectiles. So this would be like Daredevil, you could use um, Stark Enhanced Spider-Man. This would basically keep you alive longer because you're basically just going to dodge out of those specials. So right there, if you had started to just evade naturally because of projectiles, then you would have been been able to get back in and get another combo in. So in general, you're going to be dying a lot throughout this. Um, I would say on general, with a team of max four stars, you're probably going to be using two to three um, team revives. I would recommend that you use your boosts. So if you have any health boosts, any attack boosts, I'm not using them here just to show that it is possible. But again, any boost to your attack or health or damage is going to be able to have a lot higher survivability and a lot more damage over time. So that way you can get through this with less revives. Um, but I would recommend having at least three to four team revives in reserve just in case. When you do get against a wall like this, and he has his third super or second super, just continuously attack him. So attack him as soon as you use your super, um, right afterwards, that way you can maybe get a combo in. Sometimes the AI allows you to basically attack right after a super before they activate their third super. Um, damage over time, people are great as well, so cold snap, bleeds. Um, especially anyone that has stun a stun lock ability, especially early on. Um, additionally, you also can do um, anyone that increases their own attack damage, but you're better off doing someone that can have more attack up front. Um, that's going to be the best strategy. So right now he just dropped below 40%. So he should be immune to stun and to bleed. Um, and that's what you're seeing right here when you try to stun him, he basically says no. Um, this is also a great Iceman. You can do cold snap, you can get more damage in over time. Um, again, this is not when you're looking to basically survive the entire time. There are people that can do that for sure. 
Um, I'm not really one of them right now. I have not fight, fought the Collector a lot, but the big thing here is I'm just showing you how do you do this if you have a team of four stars. It is completely doable. Just make sure you're going very, very slowly. So right here, he should be immune to everything, but then basically you can still bleed him, which is a little bit odd because he should be bleed immune. Um, I might just not be fully understanding the mechanic again, so just keep that in mind. But it does seem like you can still get bleeds on him sometimes, even when he's supposed to be immune, um, which is a little bit odd again. So again, what you're going to do is you're basically just going to attack, try to get damage in. As soon as he gets a bar, above a, a single bar of super energy, become very, very aggressive. Because as soon as he activates that first bar um, of super, he's going to kill you. Unless you have someone that can projectile um, evade or someone that's extremely good at uh, dodging if you're very, very good at dexterity. So in general, I would recommend that you just get your damage in as fast as possible. Play a little more cautiously at the beginning because that way you can still do more damage until he gets his first bar super. But as soon as he gets that first bar super, you're just going to get in there and damage him. Um, just remember that when he's below 25% health, that's when he can randomly come unblockable, which is going to make things very, very difficult. You're basically just going to try to survive the 3.5 seconds that's active on. And then below 10%, he's going to have that massive amount of regeneration. And you're still able to, to deal damage through it, so it's okay. It's not like he's going to regenerate all the way back up. Um, but if you are worried about it, you always could quit out of the fight. But in general, you'll be fine. So again, I'm just trying to temper people's expectations for this fight. This is not one of those ones where there's a super easy cheese strategy that you can just completely dominate a 40,000 boss and then collect it. This is going to be very um, long and drawn out because he is unstoppable randomly below the 25% mark. Additionally, you have Bane going on. So once you hit him, you have a 10, um, a 10 second timer to basically make your combo hit in. He is stun immune. And then additionally, his first and second super are not easy to dodge, very difficult to dodge. And then on top of that, they're unblockable. So this is gonna take a lot of people. I would recommend um, team heals for sure. Use team heal, you're gonna get 40% back. I wouldn't recommend healing up afterwards just do your team heals. It's 100 units each. Um, that's going to get you through there. In general, I'd say it's going to take two to four team revives. So try to have around like 400 or 500 units. Definitely more if you can. So, I mean, if you could have a thousand, that's great. Um, you're probably not going to use them all, but it's always good to have something so we don't have to back out. Um, again, I'm doing this kind of free to play. So, you can definitely do this if you're also a free to play player. Do event quests to build up your units, do earlier chapter maps to build up your units. But this is 100% doable with um, a team of four stars that are maxed out, and you really don't need any specific champion. So, yes, you can use Daredevil. Yes, there are people that are very, very good against him that will make this a little bit easier, but you honestly can do this with any champion. Um, so I'd recommend just getting in there with your highest ones, your highest dam damage output ones, using your boost. So using the boost for attack, health, and attack and health and then making sure that you have your revives set up and really don't use heals because you're going to die basically as soon as he gets his first bar of super anyways. And, and as soon as he gets that, just become very aggressive. Even a little bit of damage to the shield is still going to add up. So overall, I wouldn't be too worried about this. Again, this run through here shows it with two team revives. If you have to use three or four, there's nothing to, to be ashamed of there. I mean, this is a very, very difficult fight. They made this very difficult. And again, this is where it gets a little confusing. You're bleeding him and stunning him here, so maybe he doesn't have the same um, relics after he goes below the certain percent health. I'm not 100% sure on that. So comment below if you know. It just looks like if he drops below the next level of Relic, potentially he doesn't have the Relics above him. I'm not 100% sure. Because right here you can still stun him even though he theoretically has the immunity. Um, the other option is maybe it's not activating early enough in the fight. Not 100% sure. Just remember again, as you just saw there, it's very easy to lose a champion very rapidly if you're getting greedy and you try to attack right after you're stunned. So right here, just stun him. Make sure that he stays stunned and then attack him. Um, so I hope this was helpful. Um, please comment below if you have any suggestions of other ways to fight the Collector. Um, please like and subscribe if you can. Share this with other Alliance mates if it's useful for you. Um, I hope this was definitely helpful. And uh, good luck with your uncollected runs and getting through Act 5.